Hi everyone. Next up, we'll be exploring prenatal yoga. This class has the intent of being an introduction to the guidelines of prenatal yoga so that you feel confident in how to best modify this practice if you have pregnant students or if you yourself become pregnant. If you are interested in exploring this topic more in depth, there are prenatal trainings you can take to add on to your 200 hour certification, which will allow you to specialize in the techniques and practice of prenatal yoga. So just as we bring awareness to the fact that everybody is different in our regular yoga practice, this is especially true for pregnant women. Each body is different, each pregnancy is different, and each woman's needs and energy levels are changing moment to moment. So to be best of service to these women, always encourage them to listen to their bodies, to tune in and nurture themselves. You too, as the guide, can offer more support and nourishment to these students in the space that you hold. The body has its own wisdom, especially a pregnant woman's body. Intuition is heightened and many women will know what is best for their bodies, what feels right, and what should be avoided. And like regular yoga, prenatal yoga offers many benefits to the practitioner. It helps the mother to get to know her body. It can ease some of the discomforts of pregnancy, such as shortness of breath and swollen ankles and feet. In all three trimesters, pregnant women can expect to experience hormone surges, mood swings, and bouts of insomnia, which yoga too can help alleviate. So yoga helps to balance the most emotions, especially in overcoming fear and cultivating inner strength and offers the mother precious time to bond with the baby. The philosophy in yoga, such as surrendering to the unknown, having no expectations, accepting what is and being present also assists the mother in the journey of childbirth and parenthood. Attending prenatal yoga classes offers the mother the opportunity to bond with other mothers, to share experiences, express concerns, and build supportive community. A well-rounded yoga class can help pregnant women prepare for body and mind for the birthing experience. The physical postures help to build strength, flexibility, and stability. Pranayama helps to cultivate energy and manage pain during labor, and meditation helps to calm and relax the mind. A few things to keep in mind. If your student has never practiced yoga or has practiced very little before their pregnancy, they should practice only prenatal yoga while pregnant. This is not the time to begin a new yoga practice or any kind of new strenuous activity. If you or your student already had a strong yoga practice before your pregnancy, you may be able to continue a fairly rigorous practice with modifications after your first trimester. During the first trimester, the fetus is still implanting and the risk of miscarriage is the highest. So it is advised that both beginning and experienced yogis only do a gentle yoga practice. So we'll go so we'll go through each trimester to learn about the changes taking place and how to best modify. The first trimester, which is zero to 13 weeks. The first trimester brings a bit of a challenge because women or many women aren't yet announcing that they are pregnant. So most likely if a pregnant woman comes to your class in the first trimester, they may not tell you. And of course, it's better not to ask. They will tell you when they are ready. So continue to encourage the practice of mindfulness and rest when needed. More than anything, you want to encourage tuning into the body and listening to what it wants. Some women who are already practicing yoga can continue with their regular practice, but with avoiding deep twists and jump backs due to the risk of miscarriage. For first trimester yoga, the postural changes are pretty minimal because the size of the belly isn't really an issue yet. However, feeling tired and nauseated are quite common in this trimester, so offer permission to rest. There are so many inner physical changes happening at this time, which causes the fatigue and nausea. So many women likely won't feel up to practicing during this time. I, for one, did it. So as a practitioner, it is important to remain adaptable in your practice and not push beyond what your body is capable of in that moment. And as I mentioned, due to the risk of miscarriage in the first trimester, it's best to practice more gentle yoga at this time. Okay, so the second trimester, this is 14 to 28 weeks. This is the ideal time to start prenatal yoga. Prenatal specific classes cater to pregnant women. 
So if a pregnant woman feels well enough to keep up their regular practice, it is still a great idea for them to attend a prenatal class so they can learn the proper modifications before returning to their regular class. And you as a teacher too can learn a lot by attending a prenatal class. Most women are past the worst of their nauseousness and their energy is beginning to return in the second trimester. And at this time, the belly is growing, but it's not too huge yet. So many students can return to a more dynamic practice if they feel comfortable. As the uterus expands, poses in the prone position and deep twists are best to be avoided and are most likely not very comfortable at this point. Dizziness and lightheadedness are common here, so deep breathing is essential. And remind your students to eat a snack before class to keep the blood sugar levels up and be sure to drink plenty of water. The third trimester, this is 29 to 40 weeks. In third trimester yoga, the belly is growing even more, which prompts more adaptations to make room for it. The sacroiliac joints are loose and breathing may be difficult. The extra weight and protruding belly will likely challenge your student's balance in every posture. So taking a wider stance and standing postures creates stability, which is helpful because you want to avoid anything that could cause your student to fall. For that reason, inversions are typically discouraged at this point in the pregnancy. However, a study published in Obstetrics and Gynecology in December 2015 was the first to monitor the fetus during the performance of yoga poses in the third trimester. And it found no evidence of fetal distress in any of the 26 postures attempted, including downward facing dog and shavasana. However, these poses may still feel uncomfortable at some point, which is reason enough to avoid them. And at around 36 weeks, pregnant women are usually advised to decrease the number of inversions they are practicing as the baby is settling into the birth position at this time. So you don't want to offer any poses that could alter his or her position in a negative way. Legs at the wall pose and bridge pose are usually best to be avoided at this point unless the baby is breached, in which case these poses can help her to turn. Poses done on all fours like cat cow stretch are also good for turning a breech baby. Hands and knees pose tabletop is a great substitute for downward facing dog pose at this point. And squats continue to be appropriate to the end of pregnancy unless you're at risk for a preterm labor. Postpartum. After birth, your students may be eager to resume their yoga practice, but encourage them to give their body enough time to heal. Doctors usually recommend six weeks of recovery time for new mothers after a vaginal birth and longer after a cesarean section. When they have been given the okay from their doctor and have no significant bleeding, they're ready to begin postpartum yoga. So my top five do's for pregnant women, hip openers, poses like pigeon pose, warrior two, triangle, half moon, bound angle, malasana, goddess pose, figure four, happy baby. These are great helping the birthing process. These hip openers can help create the flexibility that can make giving birth easier. Side stretches are great. Gate pose and variations on side plank, among other side stretches, feel particularly good when the abdomen starts to feel overcrowded. All fours. Positions in tabletops like cat-cow help get the baby into the optimal position for birth, which is head down and back to the belly. This pose can also be used to try and turn a breech baby in later pregnancy if recommended by a prenatal care provider. Standing poses. As the belly grows, begin to widen the stance in standing poses. Take the feet at least hip distance apart to help with balance, to create stability, and to make room for the bump, especially if you are bending forward. Ujjayi and Nadi Shodhana are appropriate pranayama practices. These help to regulate energy and balance the body's energy flows as well as to remain calm and present. And top things you want to avoid in prenatal yoga. 
The first big one's overstretching. So the body produces a hormone throughout pregnancy called relaxin, which is intended to soften your connective tissue, like the joints and the ligaments, to make room for the baby and to prepare for birth. So this is a great thing for the birthing process. However, the softening of the ligaments can make them vulnerable to overstretching. So try to avoid going further into poses than you are accustomed to because a pulled ligament is a serious injury and takes a long time to heal. And as a teacher too, be mindful of giving deep assist to pregnant women because you don't want to overstretch them. Um, and be especially aware of your knees and instability in the sacroiliac joints, which can cause lower back pain. So pregnant women need to be careful not to overstretch in their asana practice. Another thing to avoid is twists, especially deep twists from the belly, such as Ardha Matsyandrasana, which compress the internal organs, including the uterus. So instead, you can twist more gently from the shoulders or take an open twist, which means twisting away from the forward leg so that your belly has a lot of room instead of getting squished. Another thing to be mindful of is jump backs. So that would be like in Surya Namaskar A and B, jumping forward and back. This po poses a slight risk for dislodging the fertilized egg from the uterus, and she should be avoided early in pregnancy, especially the first trimester. So later on, though, you probably might not feel like jumping. Another thing to avoid is fast breathing. Any pranayama requiring breath retention or rapid inhales and exhales, such as kabbalabhati, should be avoided. And this is a great time to begin to practice birthing breath, which are deep inhalations through the nose and exhalations through the mouth instead. And this technique has a direct application to the birthing process. Learning to focus on the breath and use it to keep you anchored in the present moment may be the most useful thing you learn from prenatal yoga. So it's often advised to also avoid inversions Turning yourself upside down doesn't necessarily pose an inherent risk to the baby, but you do want to avoid falling. So if you're not super comfortable with inversions, this is not the time to work on them. And more experienced yogis with established inversion practices can make the call on which inversions to do. But you should be mindful that the expansion of your belly changes your balance, your center of gravity. So use the wall or in, avoid inversions if you don't feel like doing them. And you can always substitute legs up the wall in a class setting to receive some of the benefits of inverting. Another thing best avoided in prenatal yoga is backbending, especially deep back bends, like full wheel pose. So if you perform this pose easily before the pregnancy, you may continue to do it in the first trimester if it still feels good for you. Typically, you also want to avoid abdominal work, poses that are abdominal strengtheners, such as boat pose, are best to be avoided. We want to be softening the abs a bit, which allows them to stretch more readily to make room for the baby. Also poses lying on the belly in the prone position, such as cobra pose, they can be practiced in the first trimester as the fetus is still very small, but later in pregnancy, you wanna avoid anything in the prone position. Um, it's putting a lot of pressure on the fetus, on the baby, and um, it's probably gonna be pretty uncomfortable. And lying on the back is also suggested to be avoided. Um, in your second trimester, your doctor may advise against lying on your back for long periods, even encouraging you to sleep on your side. So you can start doing Shavasana, lying on your left side as early in the pregnancy as you like, and encouraging this for your students as well. Um, great time to get some props involved. You may want to use blankets or bolsters for support to make yourself more comfortable. And if you eventually cannot get comfortable lying down, you can also sit up in a cross-legged position for a Shavasana modification. And practices such as hot yoga or Bikram yoga are best to be avoided at this time. Raising your body's core temperature is not recommended during pregnancy. Therefore, hot yoga should not be practiced. 
remember yoga is about being flexible in the mind as well as the body. So hot yoga devotees should use this opportunity to explore other yoga options. So my top five prenatal yoga postures, cat cow stretch. This is a gentle way to wake up your spine and it also helps your baby get into the best position for delivery. Gate pose is another great one. This is a side stretch that helps you make a little more space in your crowded abdomen. Feels really good for pregnant women. Warrior two pose, Virabhadrasana two. This is a great standing posture that strengthens your legs and opens the hips. Baddha Konasana, bound angle pose or butterfly pose. This is a gentle hip opener that stretches the inner thighs. And a great option is to use props under each knee for support, um, make it a little bit more nourishing and restorative. Legs up the wall pose, Viparita Karani. This is a great antidote to swollen ankles and feet and a super nourishing, relaxing posture. So our key takeaways for modifications, we use props and use the wall, widen the stance in standing poses, make space for the bump, widen the legs in our forward folds, and do open twists instead of deep twists. So just like in regular yoga, remind your students to stop doing any pose that becomes uncomfortable. Give them permission to accept that they may not be able to do the things that they've always done. Cultivating physical and mental flexibility now will be super beneficial for their birthing experience and journey into parenthood.